Hi, I'm Natalie and today I'm going to make gluten-free tiramisu. And this is one of those recipes which I wanted to make and figure out for years. I mean, I love tiramisu. It is one of these perfect dishes which I could have in the morning, in the evening, for breakfast, for lunch, midnight snack, anytime, watching movies. It's just everything I want. It's coffee, it's heavy cream, it's cheese and then chocolate. It's a no-brainer and this gluten-free tiramisu will not only outshine its glutinous cousins, but will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. I finally figured out last week how to make a gluten-free ladyfinger dough so I can finally make my tiramisu! So you can follow along how I made the ladyfingers in last week's video and I added a link to my website where I listed the ladyfinger recipe. The ladyfinger batter is mixed. I decided to pour it on one baking sheet because I don't want to deal with cutting and slicing and piping just to have a tiramisu. So the tiramisu filling has two parts to it. One is the egg yolk sugar mixture that you have to cook over a hot water bath and the other one is heavy cream. And then you combine both of them. The first thing I'm going to do is now make the first part of the filling, which is the egg sugar mixture. And I need to start separating six eggs. Here are my six eggs and I'm gonna add one cup of sugar, which is 200 grams of sugar. So what I often do with the egg whites is I normally freeze it. I can use it then for a meringue or any other recipe which just asks for egg whites. And I'm gonna mix it over the hot water bath, which will cook the eggs and at the same time melts the sugar. And what makes a uh, saboy, now I have to figure out another foreign word. I hope I pronounce it correct. Now the sabayon, sabayon, is it sabayon, sabayon, sabay. The sabayon has reached 160 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to take it off the heat. I'm going to let the sabayon cool down a little and then I'm going to add the mascarpone to it. And I need to certainly make sure the mascarpone is also at room temperature, so I'm going to take it out of the fridge as well. The sabayon has reached room temperature and now I'm going to add the mascarpone and with a whisk combine both of them. I'm going to start slowly whipping the heavy cream. I'm supposed to use one three-quarter cup, which should be about close to 400 milliliters. You can certainly check on Chef Stanley's side for the perfect measurements. In the meantime, the heavy cream has reached a stiff peak. And I'm going to add the sabayon to it. So I'm going to fold in both masses and I wanted to use a very nice soft spatula to make it a bit easier. I am finished now with my tiramisu filling and now I'm going to make my coffee liqueur mixture. And for that I need an espresso of very strong coffee. And what I did was, because I don't have an espresso machine, I could make cold brew overnight. So I used one quarter cup of coffee grains and one cup of water and let it soak overnight and now I'm going to strain it with my French press. And I want to certainly add some liquor, I mean tiramisu needs some liquor. I could certainly go and buy Kahlua, but I figured I can actually make a coffee liqueur, liqueur at home with the coffee, so I'm just going to add vodka and some dark rum to it. And here's my coffee mixture. Here's my cool down lady finger cake, and I'm going to cut it into slices to make it easier to put it to the form. So much easier than piping lady fingers. So I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom and put the lady fingers in. So I'm going to brush more on, and now I'm going to add some of the filling. I'm going to add my second layer of lady fingers. I'm a little bit short, but luckily I have some extra lady fingers. And now the last layer. Okay, first set of tiramisu. And for the final touch, I have to add some cacao powder on the top of the tiramisu. And I normally like to clean up the edges of the pan, just that it looks cleaner. Just have to put the tiramisu into the fridge for four to five hours, let the heavy cream settle a little bit, and then the tiramisu is ready to be eaten. Oh yeah! And here is my tiramisu. I wanted to make tiramisu for such a long time that this is really sort of a moment of yeah, I did it! And I'm gonna have to try it. Nobody would guess that's a gluten-free tiramisu. The ladyfinger recipe I use gives it a little bit of that crumbliness of a ladyfinger. And then certainly Chef Stanley's recipe for the mascarpone sabayon thing is 
really good. My coffee with vodka and dark rum worked quite well. I actually prefer it over the Kahlua because the Kahlua would add a little bit too much sugar for my flavor. And I wasn't happy with the Ladyfinger recipe originally when you watched my first Ladyfinger episode. And certainly in my dissatisfaction of Ladyfingers, I had to run another test trial with different flower combinations to see how the Ladyfingers could be improved. And I did improve them. I got a much drier Ladyfinger and I certainly made a tiramisu with that one as well. I want to taste if there's a difference between this tiramisu recipe where I used my less happy ladyfinger recipe or my ideal ladyfinger recipe. I made this tiramisu in a container and it's a little bit hard to get out so I'm gonna just eat out of container. I mean, what's not to like about tiramisu in general? This ladyfinger absorb much more liquid so it's a little bit softer. I prefer this tiramisu because I can taste the sponginess a little bit better than in the other tiramisu. Just because it's not as good as the other tiramisu, <laughs> I'm not stopping eating this. I hope you're gonna try out making some gluten-free tiramisu. It's such a wonderful summer treat. And if you wanna learn more about great summer recipes or other gluten-free recipes and sweet treats, make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. 